Christian groups and Muslim groups and uh, Marxist groups and anarchists and all kinds of people here together uh, saying the same thing and shouting with one voice. It's fantastic. And uh, all of us need to get together and, and start letting our voices be heard. What you hear all the time if you're reading the Herald Sun, if you're watching Channel 9 and commercial news, uh, even on the ABC, is they kind of turn people like us into what they would call a mob and a mob mentality. And uh, if you look at the G20 protests, it's, it's about the mob and what they are doing and how horrible it is for the poor police officers and things like that. But really, what we are facing every day is a mob mentality. A mob mentality led by uh, corporate Australia and further up the chain, corporate America. That mob mentality of consumption, of living in the suburbs with your two cars, of uh, spending as much money as possible, having as much money as possible, all those sorts of things we all know about is what I consider a real mob mentality. It's totally irrational. It's something that we can see through, and I guess that's why we're here. However, what I wanted to just say very quickly, because I, I appreciate you standing out here in the rain like this, is that we also, as myself as a veteran, I served in the Australian Army 10 years. I went to Bougainville and uh, was a peace monitor there. I also went to East Timor, was with the very first aircraft to land on the 20th of September in 1999. And I'm not here to bash the Army or to bash soldiers. I mean, there are things that soldiers can do. And uh, I think East Timor, in the first case, was a good example. It's just like the police. If you're in trouble and they can stop you and prevent domestic violence or something, that's not a bad thing. You can't really argue with that. But when they're picking you up for jaywalking or doing other kinds of crazy things instead of helping the community, we got to say something. And that's what's happening with the Australian Army right now. We're in an unjust war, two of them, over in uh, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and we're actually in East Timor, and that's questionable as well. And we need to start thinking about that and talking about that as a community. And I think that what we can all do is start writing letters and making that an issue, taking ownership of that and pushing it. I'm not saying that we need to blame soldiers for what's going on there, obviously. But my friends that are over there, I still have a lot of friends in the Army, are there for, they're, they're loving it. It's all part of the system. They're one, they get to tell these great war stories and be war veterans when they come home in a war where they're fighting people that aren't very well armed. They're, they have small arms and things, but we have bloody helicopters. We've got rockets, we've got high-tech high sites. We still managed to kill five children just a couple of weeks ago like that. It's just crazy. And when I asked my friends why they go, I said, don't you see that this is an unjust war? One of my friends said, eh, Taliban, who cares about them? If I kill one of them, no one's going to miss them. The other thing that my friends have told me as well is they love the money. They love the money they're making over there, and they can come home, pay off their houses, and keep our cycle going. Same sort of thing. One of my friends says, I'm recession-proof. There's a recession, but not for me, because I'm in a secure government job in the Army. I go to Afghanistan, I'm away from my family for six months, the chances of something happening to me are remote. Could happen, we just lost two guys over there recently, but really, they don't really see a problem with it. And I think people have to start pointing out that there is a problem over there. Um, our group is very small. We've got about 17 members. Every couple of months, another person comes in. And we're affiliated with Iraq Veterans Against the War as well. But really, what I'd like to do is just to try and... As um, uh, my son-in-law's father, who's a, a, a union leader, said when we were talking about uh, at the NTEU, the National Tertiary Education Union, meeting once, we have to get some mongrel about us. We've got to really get a bit of mongrel about us and get out there and start making this herd again. People are now, it's the Obama, it's the Obama generation uh, running things now and we think things are kind of happy, but they're not. He's really in the, in the pockets of the corporates as well and we really need to, to make sure that he knows and that our friends and neighbors know that it's unacceptable. This is really, really unacceptable, us being over in Afghanistan doing this sort of thing. Um, thank you to the other speakers. Thank you for all coming today. And I, I hope I've made some kind of a difference. Thanks.
sorry. Gas bag, you 